Hi guys, Howard Croston. Uh, we've come down today to the very attractive and very, very productive bank house fly fishery at Caton near Lancaster. And what I'm going to try and take you through today, a few of the things around a new variation on fishing the indicator. Now, the indicator method has become completely ingrained in modern small still water fly fishing and on the reservoirs as well. And it's a really, really productive method that on its day can catch you an awful lot of fish. Now, the indicator itself has been around in many guises for many, many years, but what we've done is modify that indicator, taking on board some of the lessons that you can learn from non-fly fishing techniques and turned it into something that is much, much more effective than a standard indicator. So here's what we're talking about. This is what we've sort of coined as the drop back bung. Now, standard indicator fishing is massively popular in small still waters, reservoirs, but it does have some serious limitations when it actually comes to bite detection. So the typical scenario is, with a normal indicator, you cast it out onto the water, the fly sinks, all the time the indicator does nothing, the fly comes to depth and hangs under the indicator, a fish comes along. Now, if that fish eats the fly and swims away, the indicator goes under like everybody's familiar with, you strike and you catch the, catch the fish. But there are a lot of other things that happen and a lot of other takes that a standard indicator does not register. And that's really where the drop back bung comes in. Now the concept of this is nothing new. It's based on other forms of fishing whereby you have an indicator that actually cocks or loads by use of a weight underneath it. Now in this case, the weight required to set this indicator of the flies itself. So basically what we have is on this indicator, if you look down the side of it, you can see in the red section we've got two dots and in the yellow section we've got three dots. Now those dots relate directly to the flies that are also available to use this indicator. That means that on this particular indicator it requires two flies with a red dot to correctly load it for use. Alternatively, it requires three flies with a yellow dot to again correctly load it. So what actually happens when you use it? So as you can see here, I have the indicator on my leader. It's actually held in place by a couple of soft silicone stops, which allows me to change the depth. Below this, I've got two flies, both having the red dot on them. So that's going to load this indicator correctly. So now what happens is when I cast this out into the water, as soon as it lands, this indicator is going to lie flat on the surface of the water. What I'll do is when I've casted it out, I'll actually count quietly in my head how long it takes for this to stand on end. Let's say it takes four seconds. So I cast out, the indicator lands, I count to four and it stands on end very smartly like that. I now know that my flies are hanging freely in the water column, they're not stuck on anything, they're not on weed, they're not on the bottom, and they're set at a fishing depth. Now, let's say a fish comes along. It comes along and takes a look at the fly, but it doesn't eat it. So it swims past it. Now every time a fish swims past something under the water, it creates a little bit of a vortex. That's gonna move the fly. Now with a normal indicator, you might, if you've got very, very good eyesight, see it shake a little bit. With the drop back indicator, what you'll see is this indicator will throw in a little circle. So that lets me know that there's a fish near the flies. That's the first thing that it gives you. That's the first bit of information that you get that you don't get with a normal indicator. So, if I see that move around a little circle, I can move the indicator a little bit, move the flies, and maybe tempt him into eating it. So let's say he eats it. The typical take that you'll get with any indicator is the fish eats the fly, swims away. Indicator goes under. If it does it, strike, perfect. The reality is, a lot of times those fish will swim up to the fly and they will very, very tentatively take that fly in the mouth and they will not swim away. That's particularly true on picky or pressured fish that have seen a lot of pressure. 
with a standard indicator, the angler is completely unaware that that has happened. That's where this really comes into its own. The second a fish takes one of those flies into its mouth, it removes a lot of the weight that is required to make this stand on end. So what happens is, this indicator goes from sitting in the water like this to jumping out the water and lying flat on the surface. Now that is a very, very hittable take. That is an extra fish in your net every time it does it. Because with a standard indicator, you cannot see that happen. So this indicator on its day can sometimes give you anywhere from 20 to even 100% more takes. It is that efficient at registering a take when a fish picks the fly up and doesn't swim off with it. As well as that, it's got a host of other benefits over a standard indicator. You remember we talked a little bit right at the start about counting down how long it takes before the indicator stands on end. If I count and I know that it takes around four seconds for this indicator to cock, to stand on end, if I make a cast and it takes longer than four seconds, there's one of two things happened. The fly has either fouled something as it's sinking, it's landed on a piece of weed or in a slightly shallower area of the lake, which means I need to take it out and recast. Or, more importantly, one of the flies has been eaten while it's sinking. So whatever I, whenever I fish this method and I throw it out, if that indicator does not stand on end in the time I'm expecting, I set the hook. The number of times that as a fish that has eaten that fly as it's sinking, again, over the course of the day, puts those extra one, two, three, four fish in the net. Again, that's something else that you cannot see with a standard indicator. So some of the other things that it's good at. Standard indicators. If you want to fish them at long range, they're very, very air resistant. They're very, very difficult, particularly with a big indicator, to cast it a long way. When you cast with a drop back bung, it actually lies flat along the line. So you get no drag. So it cuts through the air very, very efficiently. When you get it out there at long range, you get a take, you set the hook. A normal indicator grabs the water when you strike. And you'll often hear that great big bloop as it pulls through the water. That prevents you from setting the hook at long range. The drop back bung falls completely flat when you strike and you'll notice when you fish it at long range and you set the hook, it takes a lot less effort and the contact to the fly is massively quicker than it is with a standard indicator. All in all, this indicator over the last four to five years has put so many more fish in the net for me both just on pleasure days and in competitions where indicators like this are allowed. It's been an absolute revelation for me. Right, so we talk about the gear we're going to use for indicator fishing. It's basically the same gear you would use for any kind of indicator fishing. In this case, this is a 10 foot for a seven rod. This particular model's uh, the Grace Kite. You can use a nine and a half or a 10 foot rod. It really doesn't matter whatever your personal choice is. I've got a floating fly line, obviously, for indicator fishing. That's fairly standard. On the end of that, I actually put the end of the fly line, a very short section of heavy monofilament to a tippet ring. This is literally only 12 inches. This is just to give me a little bit of a step down so that when I attach the, the main leader to it, I'm not tying relatively thin tippet to a braided loop. So it's just giving me a little bit of a step down. I've then got about a rod length of normal tippet material. This is six pound uh, breaking strain world class, onto which the first thing I do is add a soft silicon float stop or ledger stop. I then attach the drop back bung, available in two sizes, just pick your size. I then attach the second silicone stop above it. So now what I have is the indicator hanging freely between two silicone stops. It is important to make sure there is a small gap of about four or five mil between the stops. That just allows this to move more freely when you're casting and stops it from spinning your leader, which is quite important. Below that, 
I go down to the first dropper and in this case I have one of the buzzers out of the range which has got the little red dot on so that's half of the weight required to load this particular size of indicator then on the point I have one of the little chenille worms out of the range again with the pink dot so that gives me two dots on the flies which equates to the two dots on the side of the drop back bung so I know now when I cast this into the water that is going to stand on end and cock every single time the range is, is fairly comprehensive and it's growing all the time we've got a number of the main favorites in there for this kind of fish in these sort of small still waters that a lot of people will fish uh, with indicators so we've got a range of small chenille worms you'll notice they're a lot smaller than a lot of the other ones you see and that is a key thing a lot of people fish these great big chenille and ecstasy type worms and they're absolutely huge that's fine sometimes when the fish are not particularly pressured when they've had a little bit of pressure just simply going smaller with a very similar fly makes it a lot more effective there's a range of egg flies as well which are again a still water favorite but again you'll notice part of the range they're a lot smaller there are some bigger ones as well but there's a good number of much much smaller ones with the correct weight again to use of the indicator there's a range of buzzers great for spring and summer use and a range of patterns including a few slightly flashier ones which again can work very well on pressured fish there's also some uh, larger lure type patterns which are often a favorite to be hung under indicators things like uh, the wagon warrior range which is basically just a, a weighted zonka that's also available in the correct weights to fish under this indicator so there's a whole host of patterns worms eggs nymphs and some lures all ideal for use with the drop back bung One of the main questions I get asked is, can I use it with my own flies? Do I, do I have to buy the specific flies for use of this indicator? What I would say is that the flies that we've developed for use of this indicator have been critically balanced to make sure this thing loads and indicates to the optimum level. So I've put a huge amount of work in to getting the weights exactly right for use with this system. You can use your own flies under it, but you will have a lot of trial and error to get this to sit correctly in the water and, and give you the maximum benefit that you get from fishing this type of thing. So without doubt, the flies that we've developed to go along with it really do underpin this particular style of indicator and make it as effective as it possibly can be.